All right, how's it going, Charles Botenston? I actually recorded an entire video and I noticed that I didn't have my freaking microphone on. <laughs> so the last video was actually really good. This one's gonna be better because I practiced and now I'm actually gonna do the real one. So this one comes down from a, or this question comes from an Instagram message that I received from Chris London. Chris London, how's it going? So if you guys have any questions, you could either leave in the comments below or shoot me an Instagram message. You can see how long that is. By the way, look at that beautiful case. So that's a, it's a long message. I'm gonna pretty much just go over it. Yo, Charles, hope this finds you well. I have something I've been comp contemplating but struggle to come up with the answer, all right? So I've been listening to more and more of David Goggins and he obviously has a lot to offer but I think he's a little too extreme in the sense of saying stuff like 90% of life sucks and not to read books and look internally. So my question is, how do you extract the value from someone who has that much to offer without extracting the extreme mindset? So in other words, it really boils down to if someone you're listening to is, you know, and this could be anyone, and I'll, and I'll get into a couple examples, is that this could be anyone. They say something, you don't, you don't actually agree with it. It could be for anything, politically, uh, it could be just their mindset in this case. It could be whatever, it doesn't matter. If you disagree with them or you agree with them. This is the thing, all right? So first of all, there's a lot to, to unpack here. What we have to actually internalize is the objective and the subjective, okay? The objective is the words that came out of the mouth. Okay, in other words, if I actually say this in text, in other words, you don't hear the tonality, you don't see me, you don't know how I'm actually saying this, but you actually just read it out in an email, you put meaning to what I'm saying. And it's the same thing here, is if I say the words Donald Trump, what comes to mind? Do you get really fired up? Do you get, that's my man? What if I say the, the, the woman Hillary Clinton? What, what goes through your mind? Okay, so in other words, I just said words, okay? Then you put meaning on top of that. So the words is, the words are, I should say, are objective, okay? Then you have the subjective, which is what your meaning is of those words, okay? And that gap is essentially what we're trying to close. There's a lot of people that are just completely emotional right now that they need to step back and say, just because someone said something, doesn't mean they actually have no value to give you, okay? Here are the two examples I just told you, Donald Trump. The guy hacks media. The guy's amazing at hacking media. He says something controversial, they write about it, then they ask him about it, then he says something else, they write about it, then he's, the, the guy's a, a master at that. If you look at Hillary Clinton, where she came from and how far she got, uh, you know, just obviously the wealth, whether you agree or not, just, just an inspiration for a lot of women, you know? Those are the things you could take out of it, whether, and then you have negative things on top of that. This is also the case, okay? When I talk about Tony Robbins, I was at one of his recent events. Actually, it wasn't really recent, it was about a year ago. And the guy curses way too much now. Like, just, I don't know where it came from, but he just didn't need to insert all the cursing. And for the first day, I was like, this is a complete turn off. Kind of don't, don't like what the message and, and how he's actually saying it. Then I said, actually, we need a little bit more Marcus Aurelius, which is you take the message, you remove what you don't like, which is say the cursing or something else. And then you say, actually, that's a really good point, Tony Robbins, even though you curse. Gary Vaynerchuk, a lot of people don't like his cursing. A lot of people don't like how extreme his mindset is either. David Goggins, his mindset is extreme. You remove the extreme mindset, and I'll get into a really good example. You remove the extreme mindset and you say, actually, David Goggins, very disciplined. And he also, he said something, so this is the interesting thing, is he said something life, 90% of life is suffering, okay? We're gonna talk, to, talk about that in a second. So that's something you may not agree with. However, why did he say that? Why is he actually saying that only 10% is fun and happiness and joy? Okay, should it be 50-50? Should it be 100% joy? Maybe not, maybe that's too extreme. So then you start unpacking that further. That's the biggest thing is that when someone says something you disagree with or you don't know anything about before actually labeling it, before actually saying I, you know, am emotional about this, I have to do some research about it. So 90% of suffering, where does that come from? Buddhism. Buddhism says life is suffering. That is the basis of Buddhism. And then on top of that, they say, what are you gonna do about it? Okay, life is suffering, say, let's bring up uh, a couple of examples. Number one is money. Say you have a ton of money. Bill Gates has a ton of money. There's a lot of people that hate him just because he has a lot of money, okay? That's something that he can't control. 
The second on top of that is, what am I gonna do with my money, okay? There's a lot of people that are asking for his money. There's a lot of people that came out of the rafters and said, hey, listen, you owe me money. A lot of people target him because they wanna sue him. So whether you have money or not have money, and obviously if you don't have money, there, you have a whole separate slew of problems than, than if you do have a lot of money. If you're really in shape, a lot of people are jealous and they hate you, and you know it's really hard because you actually have to eat right and go to the gym when you don't wanna to go to the gym, so that's suffering. In other words, you can't go with what your body wants, which is junk food and a bunch of other, other things. Then if you're completely out of shape, life is suffering because you may have a heart attack, you may have your arteries clogged, your heart is just working way too hard. This is the best example. There's this guy at the gym, a great guy, and the thing is, if you see someone and you completely disagree with everything they say, all right, and, and I'll give you some examples after this. Say you completely disagree with something they say, at least you could say, this is who I don't want to be, okay? This is how I don't want to be, to live my life. Here's the example, the guy at the gym, he just literally goes every single day maintaining the same weight, which is borderline obese, okay? And he goes every single day and, he, and he's sorta of sweaty, but not really sweaty, and I'm like, dude, something's gotta give, okay? You, you can't, and he's in his 60s. So in my mind, I say, I don't want to be this person. He's a great guy, I really like that. But the 10% is, I don't want his health at that age. Okay, so if it's David Goggins or anyone else, Gary Vaynerchuk, Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, you know, and I'll talk about Grant Cardone in a second, which is there's, there's areas that are great, and the reason I put it in, in quotes is it's, it's great to you, you need it, okay? And then there's areas that you say, I don't actually like that, and I'm gonna do the total opposite. Here's the best example about Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone, obviously controversial, a lot of people don't like what he stands for, what he talks about, uh, you know, whatever the case is. You know, he pushes that money in sales is the end all and be all, and marketing. I really like that because I would rather be wealthy, okay? Listen, money exposes the person. You're, you're either a rich asshole or you're a rich nice guy. Money just exposes you, okay? I've, read, I've also met really broke assholes and really broke fun people. So it's not money, it's the person. So in other words, you take the idea, Grant Cardone says sales, money, and wealth, and marketing are really good. Okay, great, I love that, I'm gonna take that. I kinda don't like that my entire life revolves around it. I'm gonna leave that to other people, okay? I'm gonna build morality and ethics and everything else and the money together. So in other words, I push away the things that I disagree with. Another one, Ty Lopez, you know? Ty Lopez, you know, it's great that knowledge and books and getting better and 1% better and that's great, I love that. And the knowledge, knowledge that he pushes is great. But I don't like that he's got five, six fancy cars, you know, that's what, you know, at least $2 million right there that you could have put into something else besides a depreciating asset like a car or a house that he's renting, probably spending sixty to $70,000. And then also just the way that he's actually doing. He doesn't really talk about his business. So those are things that I say, I don't really like that. Ty, great guy. At least I say, I don't wanna do that. And then this is what I wanna do, which is get 1% better. I've learned a lot from him, all right? So when you find someone that you really like, or even if you don't like, you say, if you don't like anything, I don't wanna be that person. I don't wanna live my life like that, okay? It could be health, wealth, relationships, whatever the case is. You know, another example that I'm gonna give is my, my someone I know. I don't wanna actually, you know, get it out there, but someone I know, they live this, they, they live like a double life. What it is online and what it is in person. I don't wanna live like that. I wanna be completely congruent on both areas. Online, they're beautiful, they're fun, their life is amazing, their relationships are great, their kids are great. And then in life you meet them and the person's complaining the entire time. My husband sucks, my job sucks, my kids are just, you know, they're a nuisance and everything else. It's like, dude, you post this thing that's totally different than this. So I don't wanna be that. I don't wanna be not congruent. So you take the good, you leave the bad, all right? If it's too extreme, great. And this is all subjective to you. And then there is the opposite, which is I don't wanna be this person. This is how I'm gonna live my life. I hope that helped a little bit. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments below or shoot me an Instagram message. Obviously, follow me on Instagram if you want. Doesn't really matter. I think I'm gonna get into more and not think I am gonna get into more Instagram about the books I'm reading. A lot of people have responded to that right now. I'm reading uh, Do the Work by Stephen Pressfield. Stephen Pressfield 
has doing the work, going pro, and the war of art. And he did it later in life, to say the least. So it's very inspirational to hear that. You know, there's a lot of people, the two other people that come to mind are uh, Ray Kroc, founder of McDonald's, and the, the guy that did KFC. Burton, I almost said Bernie Sanders, something, whatever his name is. They also, they did it very late in life. Ray Kroc, I think was like 54. Um, and then 65 was the guy that founded, Colonel Sanders founded KFC. So if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. Have an amazing day. Hopefully that answered your quest question, Chris.